Welcome back, everybody. Take a break with Stephen. Stephen Seamus. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, it looks like you're wearing the same thing as last week, Alex. Did, did you know what? The laundry, I, 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 it, the it's, laundry Wednesday. Machine. it's Wednesday. The, I, I, the, it's Wednesday. I have the, I have seven shirts. They're all lined up <laughs> in my closet with little tags on them. Got it. Got it. All right. What are we talking about today, Alex? Yeah, we've got we've got some fun, fun stuff. We're going to talk The Hood. We're going to talk Squirrel Girl. The spot. Say, I hate to interrupt, but are you planning on stealing that really big pile of money there? Uh, yes, rather. And how exactly were you planning on doing that, Mr. Uh... Call me the spot. And I was planning on doing this. I think my favorite villain from the 90s Spider Man animated uh, TV show. Uh, and then, of course, we come back home to Muppets, Fraggle Rock. Yeah, again, a little nostalgia, a little new stuff, stuff that will surprise you. I don't think people are knowing and thinking and about all this stuff. So, so let's hop to it, Alex. What are we going to talk about first? Yeah, let's talk about the hood. Uh, Parker Robbins, the yes. hood, uh, caught me off guard. Again, Brian K. Vaughn, his name seems to come up every couple of weeks. Uh, what <laughs> is this hood? Creator. Why is this hood book after nine came out in 2002, 19 years? This must have been very early, Brian K. Vaughn. Very early. I, I, why you, out of I mean, just like this is this is like why last man's been out for a little while. It's pretty popular. And they're like, oh, Brian K. Vaughn, why don't you uh, he's done he's done detective and Batman, he's done some stuff, he's done some work. Um, and then he does the hood for, for Marvel's Max line, which at that point I think it was just alias, it might have been Cage maybe a couple other books here and there alias was their big hit um but this is this was a this was another hit it was a hit it was all created by bkv kyle holtz and um eric powell i believe um it's about a villain who essentially robs an alien steals his hood and boots and becomes you know a bigger crime uh bigger thief crime boss if you will than what he was he was just a low level thief and i mean by the way sorry guys I, it's it's one of the best like in continuity out of continuity miniseries it was just fun it was just fun if the whole book he there's no redeeming quality you're not like oh you know he's had a bad life he's just a bad guy it's just a villain book it's pure evil it's great is, is there any sense as why after 19 years this book is seeing such a rise uh because he's not going anywhere he's staying in the marvel universe okay. he fights with kingpin he's you know he's hammerhead he is a he is a villain. He is a villain. He is a, he's a, uh, you know, I wouldn't say top tier. He's not a super villain. He's not like Green Goblin, but he is a, you know, he is a crime underworld type villain. And, you know, he's not going anywhere. And I mean, how easy would this character be in a, in a TV show, you know, you know, fingers crossed a new Daredevil show comes out or, or, or something. And, you know, this fit right in. Yeah. So, uh, and by the way, Eric Powell, this has got to be very early Powell. Powell yes. work. I mean, this yes. predate Goon or no? No, no. Goon was out. Goon was out. Okay. Yeah, Goon had been out for a while, and he'd been doing covers and stuff like that. Got it. Got it. Okay. The hood number one, July of two thousand two. Alex, eighty nine blue label, two gold label, nine point eight, five hundred twenty five dollars. That's a mm. pretty hefty price. Mm-hmm. Seventy five dollars raw. First appearance of Parker Robbins, The Hood. Um, so this book is on fire. It's something to watch. I mean, I again, Alex, you and I talk about this all the time. Like, I don't know if dealers have picked through their inventory or. Right kind of know or don't know but like there's so many hidden gems that we talk about every single week that like i don't know that people know about all this stuff you know yeah yeah this is stuff that and, you know buy a full set from a from a deal they have full sets on, at, at cons i'm sure they have one of these and, and by the way we're going to talk about a lot of books tonight uh that that are not necessarily i don't think are necessarily up on the the the, the dealer shelves so sure. um all right what, what do we got next alex ah doreen our squirrel girl yeah, so so her first appearance and her first uh, solo series have gone crazy. Yes. What's interesting is that her first appearance was back in 1992, so it's been a long time already. But then, then the the first series standalone was 2015. Yeah. So the standalone series wasn't for 23 years. Uh, first of all, uh, what happened in 1992, and then what happened with 23 years later? Yeah, I mean, this is 
this is a, this is a weird case of th- she was created by Steve Ditko. That's a big deal. It wow. was like you know tail end of Marvel work for Steve Ditko. He created two characters towards the tail end: Speedball and Squirrel Girl. Speedball becomes more prevalent in House of in uh, Civil War and stuff like that. He's kind of gone away. Um, but Squirrel Girl, like complete fan favorite. She talks to squirrels. She's athletic. She's funny. Uh, you know, she's mostly been used as a comedic character, um, but she l- literally took off when they announced her own series. And a lot of times they just give, you know, they give creators like, hey, try this out. Pitch to us. What do you want to do? Oh, you want to do a Squirrel Girl series? Sure, go for it. We'll, we'll do a couple issues, see if it hits. And this hit hard. And I think it's, you know, it's one of those things where people are like, Alex, what's your favorite Marvel character? And I'm like, oh, I love Dupe. And they're like, who's Dupe? I'm like, oh. He was from this Sorry. one series of ecstatics back in the day, and nobody else knows about him. You know, yeah. Spell D O O P, by the way. That's I knew it. That. Yeah, I knew that. Yep. I think I have one of the only Bowen statues of him. I think they only made like 120 or something. Yeah, those are very, very tough. All yeah. right. So, Marvel Superheroes Volume 2, number eight, January of 92, 357 blue label, 13 gold label, 9.8. It's about a $1,600 book, Alex. That's pretty and $150 high. $150 raw. Uh, it was a winter special, first appearance of Squirrel Girl, and then X Men were in there, Iron Man, Namor stories are in there. Uh, you're right, Steve Ditko, very good. Steve uh, Ditko, and an Eric Larson cover, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then you had uh, Unbeatable Squ- Squirrel Girl number one from March of 2015. Uh, Erica Henderson, there was a pink cover, and you'll yep. see why for the second and third covers. Uh, 39 blue label, 12 gold label, 9.8. That's about a hundred sixty dollar book. The Scotty Young variant cover, 12 blue label, 10 gold label, 9.8. Uh, that's about a $30 to $40 book raw. Uh, you can't find them in, in CGC. There's only pop yeah. 12. Uh, Saya Ohm, I love her work. Yes. Love her work. Uh, one in 20 variant cover, 17 blue label, 7 gold label, 9.8. 60 to 80 dollars raw Jeez, alex that's crazy and this was a, okay. this was a highly printed book i believe this they they pushed this book hard arthur adams one in 25 variant cover 23 blue label 10 gold label 9.8 175 to 225 dollars raw Jeez, i mean that means the saya ohm cgc 98 might be four or five hundred yeah. that would also mean that the arthur Makes adams sense. might be 800 to a thousand right and then the uh, Erica Henderson blue cover, second print, uh, April of 2015, three blue label, zero gold label, 9.8. That's about $115. One is for sale for in the 9.8, about $30 to $40 raw. And then the Eats cover is the third print. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, what I, you, when you see the cover, you see it, yeah. says, it yeah. says Eats on it. Uh, I don't, uh, do you know what that means or no? Yeah. So they did, when they did multiple printings for two, three, and four, the cover spelled out Eats Nuts Kicks Butts. So the number one was eats. Number two, uh, I believe, second printing was kick or nuts. Eats nuts, kicks butts. Yeah, that's what, they, that's what they spill out. Thank yeah. you for clearing that up. I had no it's idea. Very it's funny. It was a very it. funny uh, gimmick, it. if you will. All right, August of 2015, the third printing, one blue label, zero gold label, nine eight. That's a thirty to forty dollar book raw. So again, that book, these books are on it's fire out flame. Yeah. Again, this is, I mean, there was footage. I mean, if you go on, if you look up squirrel girl on, you know, new, new warriors, they were going to do free form that did the cloak and dagger show. We're, we're oh, working right. on a You're new, right. uh, uh, not new mutants. Right. It was a new warriors TV show. They had footage of, uh, an actress in a squirrel girl costume. So right, right, right. they're going to push it at some point. Right, right. All right, then we have, uh, all right, so now it's time for Alex's Pick of the Week. What do you got, Alex? I, I've talked about it in the past, but convention exclusives, really, for 2021, if you can get them, get them. You know, New York Comic Con just happened recently, and they had exclusives. There was show exclusives. There was stuff you could get at panels. You know, if you went to a panel, they'd give you, a, you know, a, a signed poster or something. New York Comic Con did not have a full amount of people like they normally do. They, there was there was a, a, definitely a cutoff on how many people you can have at a show, and that's any show. You know, you're talking about the San Diego show and in, in things at Thanksgiving weekend. Um, you know, and you know for the Saga panel, I believe they gave out you know a little poster, and it was signed by BKV and Fiona. Oh, Staples. that's cool. That's and, cool. Announcing Saga 55 that's coming out next year. Um, you know, 
but in a in a regular non COVID convention, that's probably a two hundred to five hundred person panel. It might have been smaller. You know, those are going to be very hard to find. You know, and and conventions don't like give those out at the end of the show. They pass them out the panel and they're trash. That's the whole point of an exclusive. So again, I you know be on the lookout for twenty nineteen show exclusives or twenty twenty one show exclusives because. They're not going to be easy to find in five years. You know, you're, you're going to look right. for, uh, you know, the Funko New York Comic Con pigeon. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck in five years. They're, they're going to be gone. Right. Right. All right. Cool, Alex. And then. All right. So what do we got next, Alex? The spot. As he Dr. Jonathan name. Owen. That's it. OK. Why is this book going crazy, Alex? I. Th- <laughs> Who knows? Who knows off the top of your head why? Uh, it, uh, people are posting that they think it's going to be in the Spider Verse. Sure, I mean, you look at you look at the you look at the movie, you look at the new Spider Man movie, and it's and it's a multi dimension. Doc Ock comes out of nowhere. Well, why? Where? Um, you know what's getting there? The Spot would be a great villain to have as like someone who's pulling characters out of different dimensions because his powers are he gets to go into another dimension, he can find things, he can pull stuff out. Um, he can go to different different universes. Why not have him here or even in the new animated movie? I mean, if you're talking about a multi-dimensional thing, um, you know, into the Spider-Verse, they, cl- you know, they cleared that up of, you know, they closed the door. So Miles Morales is his own universe. Uh, Spider-Gwen's in her own universe. spider Ham's in her own universe. This would be another character that could help bring them back together for, uh, you know, a number two. Plus, people, people must believe it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think I think this is also a fan favorite. Again, he was he was a, a good villain in the Spider-Man animated, you know, TV in the comic books. He's been, he literally dies and comes back constantly. <laughs> they, they keep bringing him back. So, you know, it'd be a fun villain and it makes sense with all the multiverse stuff going on in the TV and movies. Got it. Got it. Okay. So spectacular Spider-Man number 98, January of 85. So it's 36 years old already. Very low pop. Yep. 40 blue label, four gold label, 9.8, 350 to $500 now. Uh, $25 raw. Sounds like a good buy. Black Cat and Kingpin appearances. Dr. Jonathan Owen becomes the spot. Uh, Al Milgram story and cover. Herb Trimpey artwork, by the way. Mm-hmm. There also exists a Canadian Classic. version. Yeah. Yeah. Then the second appearance is in Spider uh, Spectacular number 99, February. Mm-hmm. 39 blue label, one gold label, 9.8. That's about a $200 uh, book. That's all. There's also a Canadian version. Uh, also a Herb Trimpey cover. Uh, the last one is Spectacular Spider-Man number 100, also an anniversary issue. Yep. March of 85, 28 blue label, zero gold label, 9.8. That's about $175 book, uh, Al Milgram cover and story. So that's Al Milgram art uh, instead of the, the, uh, the uh, I'm Trippy. sorry, Al Milgram did the cover. Yeah, yep. Trippy did the interiors on, nine, I'm sorry, on 99. Al Milgram did the cover on all three of those, 98, yep. 99, and 100. Okay. Uh, all right. What are we closing out with tonight, Alex? One of the best inventions on, on TV history, uh, Fraggle Rock. Yeah, so we've discussed uh, the Muppets many, many times on the show. The Fraggle Rock is just as brilliant. Yes, uh, I still can't get over how great the original Muppets are. Yeah, you know it's funny. I've watched some of the new Muppets, like Haunted Mansion, and some of the other ones. And again, I'm not a movie critic. I'm not trying to like <laughs> stir controversy. Uh, the charm. And the personalities of the original Muppets is impossible to replicate. Right. It's right. just when you yep. watch the vintage Muppet show and you watch it's those shows, the characters are alive. They're living and breathing characters. Yes. You can suspend your belief. I, yeah. It's hard. Now, maybe because I grew up on those voices or whatever. Yeah. It just feels like those have the the, the personality. It's, uh, it's the like perfect everything. trifecta. I mean, that, that Jim Henson, the Muppet show, Sesame Street, Fraggle Rock. It's like the perfect, like, you know, hit after hit after hit. Sesame Street's still going on. Fraggle Rock is still popular. The Muppets, like you said, Haunted Mansion. They're still doing Muppet stuff. It, it, the properties aren't going anywhere. Yeah. So uh, Fraggle Rock, I think, is, is we've talked about the Muppets on here. We've talked It's just one of those other nostalgia shows where it's getting big. Fraggle Rock number one, April of 85, 30 blue label, zero gold label, 9.8, based on the TV show, Stan K. Story, Marie Severin art, by the way. Yeah, it's Uh, big. 
$850 now, yeah. 9.8. Yeah. The book was yeah. never that. Ex- Let no. me tell you something. Those who were in the dollar bin for a long time, I don't care what you tell me. I remember those. Kids, again, we've talked about it a thousand times. It's a kid's book, all beat up. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. It's not the first appearance of the spot. People don't pick these books up thinking they're worth something. But when you think about 30 Blue Label 9.8s, that's extremely low, extremely low. And then nostalgia yeah. thing, you know, again, I, I have a 9.6. Like I bought one. Do myself. you really? I do. When? I do. I bought it. How did you pay for it? Maybe a year ago. It wasn't worth anything. Wow. It's a 9.6. It's not a 9.8. Let so me people, ask something. When you paid, when you bought it, how much you pay for it? I think I paid 120. It's funny, right? Yeah. It's funny. And, and I'm sure I could, I could, you know, if a 9.8 is 850, I'm sure I could get 300 for it on the market. But I, I bought it because I just like, I like the cover. I like Marvel star, the, the kid stuff. Uh, and I'm a huge Jim Henson fan. So I was like, yeah, let me buy it. Let me buy one. And it was cheap. So I bought it. So funny. So funny, right? So funny. And, and yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, who knows? I could probably pop it and press it and send it to Brad and have him resubmit it. Who knows what comes out of it? 850. <laughs> yeah, that's a big book. All right. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today. By the next time you see us, Alex will be a married man. That's true. That's true. You'll have a ring on your finger, right? I will. Yep. Yep. (laughs) All right. So if you have any questions and comments, put it in the field. And we will see everybody next week. Same bad time. Same bad channel. Thanks, guys. (laughs) 